Welcome to Looking at Legal Stuff. Today we have four hearings in a case with a couple who are in court for a parenting plan. But Dad, who has a history of substance abuse, is unhappy with the recommendations from the gal that include professionally supervised visitation. When the judge decides to continue the hearing because Dad said he hadn't received the gal's report yet, he gets angry and impatient and ends up cursing at the judge. Let's see what the judge will do. Uh, so the next case is Justin Yokel and Courtney Geyer. And Ms. Turnbull's here. I think I saw Ms. Geyer. And I saw, I see Justin. Uh, um, I am actually Justin's uh, caregiver. My name's Allie. Okay. He, is, he was admitted to OHSU Hospital yesterday morning from the emergency room from Tuesday night. And I called the courthouse and she said that this was the best way to let you know. All right. Do you know, um, you don't have to go into his condition, but if you could let me know potentially how long you think he'll be in the hospital. Um, today's Thursday. I would say by like Monday or Tuesday, he would be fine to be on Zoom. All right. Ms. Geyer, uh, any comment on putting this over a week or two? Yes, I keep... I have a job and I have to usually put in time off requests to get all these court dates. He already just last time added this court date because he wanted to see Talon. So this was an added on extra one. And then we have court again, July 20th, which I have time off for, I put that in. Um, so all these little court dates and then the other one was held up because he didn't have his paperwork in on time. So we had to set this one. And now I'm missing work for this one for no reason because apparently he can't show. Um, it's always an excuse or a holdup. So for me, it's kind of difficult to keep asking each week for hours off. Okay. Thank you for mentioning that. You know what the hearing is on July 20th? Parenting plan stuff, same stuff. Okay. I just had court on Monday with him for a restraining order, so. Impeccable timing, I feel like, for him to get sick. Well, I know it puts it out of ways, but I'm inclined to put this over to July 20th to minimize the impact on Ms. Geyer. Um, Ms. Turnbull, any comment on the timing? I think that would be all right. To be honest, Mr. Yokel um, did not return his paperwork. And so I was just able to make contact with him on Friday, last Friday, the 2nd. And we did that by phone. So I uh, completed, you know, I asked him the questions and completed it um, by phone, and then he texted me, you know, the ROI, the signed signature. And so I have just started my investigation, um, you know, on his side of, um, of the case. And he has, um, he does have a history of heroin abuse and prescribed pain medication abuse. And I have not been able to make contact with um, his drug counselor and get independent verification that he's in the methadone clinic and receive any of his medical records or anything like that. And so that would be helpful for me to be able to get that information before I make recommendations. Okay. Well, it sounds like if we had gone forward with the hearing today, I probably was going to be putting it out till somewhere in July anyway. So um, I'm going to, um, continue the case then to July 20th and that'll be at nine o'clock and um, whoever is here for uh, Mr. Yokel, uh, if you could encourage him to work with Ms. Turnbull to get the information she needs, that will. That's fine. Um, can I make one quick comment? Sure, please. Um, his counselor did write him a letter uh, or Amy, I guess Amy, a letter that he was in compliance with the clinic. So I'm not sure why they're not. Um, responding to her yet but okay. we could get the letter to her if that would be great okay Maybe, Thank could you. you call me after the hearing yeah that's fine okay do you have my number 
Yeah, I have his phone, so I'll look in his phone and get it from from his phone. Okay. Ms. Guyer, uh, will that uh, amount of time be okay with you? So on July 20th, we have our court date already, so it's just combined? Yeah, okay. whatever is already scheduled, we'll just combine it with, with today's. Okay. okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you both. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Had, you know, if she was so afraid or had all this, you know, concerns, then she should have been the one that filed it. And I was the one who filed it because I wanted consistency and I wanted this. And she's bringing up all this stuff from things that like with no, there's no back to it. I mean, I've never, Talon's never been hurt. He's never been, you know, had any kind of issues being with me. And I've had him a lot. And that's why I'm so upset is because I've, you know, her and the guardian let him just like team up. And it's like, wait a minute, you guys talked to me for five minutes and I've never given any reason for any any of this. Mr. Yoko, did you read Ms., uh, the guardian ad litem's recommendations? There is four uh, main points of, of recommendations and there is subsection two had four, uh, four specific recommendations as to visitation. Do, do you have any position on those recommendations? Um, I haven't. <sighs> I haven't even read it. They, she's not not told me about anything. I've been in the hospital. Other than that, I don't know um, what her, her. Let me go ahead and share it with you, so you so you know what she's saying. She, she's yeah. recommending that um, Ms. Geyer have primary custody of Talon, uh, including educational and medical decision making authority, and recommending a phased in parenting or residential time for Mr. Yokel. She indicates that uh, her recommendation is that Mr. Yoko have professionally supervised visitation up to four hours weekly, and uh, the supervisor notes would be submitted to the court and uh, to Ms. Geyer, and that you would have to complete a, a mental health evaluation and comply with all treatment recommendations, and you'd have to submit for uh, the, the, the evaluation and compliance reports to the court and to, to Ms. Geyer. Same for the substance use evaluation. Uh, comply with treatment recommendations, submit the evaluation and compliance reports to the court and Ms. Geyer. And then um, it looks like Ms. Geyer fell off and looks like she's coming back in. So let's get her back in. Okay, Ms. Geyer fell off, but it looks like she's back in. I was just reviewing the recommendations from the guardian ad litem. And then once those uh, those those aspects have been completed, then Mr. Yoko would be free to petition the court to phase in a, a lay supervisor or a non-professional and unsupervised visitation. Uh, so that's the, the recommendation from Ms. Turnbull. Right, and what, what is her uh, basis off those recommendations? I mean, what have I, what has been caused that is that would warrant something like that? So let me ask Ms. Ms. Turnbull, did you provide a, a copy of that document of the, your report to Mr. Yokel? I mailed it to him certified in priority mail and it should have, uh, he should have received it no later than yesterday. Absolutely did not receive anything. Okay, all right. Well, I, here's I think I think the, the the approach we should probably take at this point. The, the motion to dismiss it's um, number one. It's not properly before the court. The service was not given to Miss Geyer, so she hasn't had an opportunity to re respond. Um, more so and more to the point, um, although any party can move to dismiss once a case has been filed, the court has ultimate decision making as far as if a case is going to be dismissed. I think there's enough issues here raised by Miss Turnbull and her her report that indicates uh, some concerns and issues related to substance use uh, disorder and also mental health concerns, that it, it would be improper to grant that motion to dismiss. So I'm denying it. I'm denying that motion and I've signed off on that order that denies the dismissal. So the case lives on and continues. Since Mr. Yokel has indicated that, um, Ms. Turnbull, you said you sent it certified, your, your report to Mr. Yokel. Sometimes you get those little green cards back. It's probably too soon for you to have received that back. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, um, I'm taking so Mr. Yokel's indicated that he hasn't hasn't read the guardian ad litem report. Um, so it's probably best um, if we were to uh, return to this once uh, he's had an opportunity to review that um, with uh, Ms. Ms. Turnbull's representation that she sent it certified and it's likely going to be delivered at latest either yesterday or today. If we were to set this over one week, uh, we could call this case at the top of the docket next week, um, have a quick review again of the guardian ad litem report. Everybody will have read that at that time, and we could have a, a more uh, full uh, and, uh, conversation and, and finalize a decision on, on the, the recommendations. Uh, 
So yeah. that's, that's what I'm thinking we need to do. So that's what we'll do. So today we're at the 20th. Let me ask uh, Mr. Yoko, are you, avail- are you available on the 27th at 9 a.m.? Sure. I, I just have one question. Okay, hold on a second. Ms. Turnbull, what's your schedule like on the 27th? I'm available. Okay, thank you. Ms. Geyer, what's your schedule like on the 27th? I work. Um, I work. So, yeah, I have to work every day. So um, if I don't put in notice, it's kind of uh, hard for me, but I can do my best since it's, you know, court. I do my best to see if they'll let me. Okay. Step away for a while at 9, 9 a.m. or something and take my lunch early. Yeah. Something. Okay, great. I appreciate the flexibility of all parties. So we'll set it back to the, set the matter over to the 27th of July, 9 a.m. Hopefully we can take it at the top of the docket and let people get back since we probably we spent some time on it here today and people have, uh, have other things to do. So uh, Mr. Yoko will get a copy of that um, and then we'll be able to respond and hear about the case from all parties. So we'll see everybody next week, the 27th of July at 9 a.m. Thanks. So I have a question. Thanks. Question. Yes. So we're going to wait, set it over a week to have her report reflect five minutes that we talked. Is that what, what this is? Because you might as well just do it now. I mean, what's the point of waiting a whole other week just to set over, you know, for her to give five minutes of her of her talking with me? The point, the point of setting it over is giving a, yeah. a notice and opportunity to be heard. So you indicated you have not received the report. Uh, I think it's important it that you read the report. It obviously doesn't matter. Aware. Don't interrupt me, Mr. Yokel. Well, obviously it doesn't Mr. Matter. Yokel, do not interrupt me. Do you understand that? Dude. This is fucking bullshit. Mr. Yokel, if you swear again, I'll hold you in contempt. Do you understand that? I'm warning you. All right. Take care of that himself. Thanks. We'll see everybody next week. Next, I have Justin Yorkel and Courtney Geyer. This is 223-004408. Right. Do I have Justin Yorkel or Courtney Geyer? I do see you, Ms. Turnbull. I'm here. Courtney. All right. And I do see um, you, Ms. Geyer. All right. So in this case, um, I have a conflict. That just means that at one point in time, I've um, either myself or my firm has represented one of the parties. That means I might have knowledge that um, isn't available through um, what's just been pled in the in the court file, uh, meaning it might not be fair for me to make a decision on this case. Um, what we do in cases like that is just set over one week, and that's what we're going to do um, today. It's just set over one week for another judicial officer um, to be able to be here to make that determination. So uh, I'm going to put this matter over to August 3rd. Um, so just over one week, same time, same place, um, just over one week. Next, I have Justin Yokel and Courtney Geyer, cause 223-440-08. And there, Ms. Turnbull is the guardian at Lydon. She's present. And I'll ask if uh, Justin Yokel, if you're on the line, please state your name. Uh, Justin Yokel. Right. Welcome to you, Mr. Yokel. And Courtney Geyer, if you're on the line, please state your name. Courtney Geyer. Okay. Well, welcome to, to you, Ms. Geyer. All right. Uh, we're here for a review of the Ms. Uh, Turnbull's report, which was submitted on July 17th, uh, 2023, then made some recommendations. Um, I'll ask uh, Ms. Turnbull, do you have any any comments related to your to your report that you submitted? Not at this time. Okay. All right, and then um, let me hear from the the parties what your take is on on the guardian ad litem's recommendation related to the the parenting plan of of Talon. Um, so I'll hear from uh, the petitioner, Mr. Yokel, first, and I'll hear from the respondent, Ms. Geyer, next. Mr. Yokel, um, there was a few things on there that um, I didn't I didn't agree with or or thought that it gave the whole uh, you know spectrum of of what's been going on and uh yeah i just uh yeah <laughs> I, obviously i want to be uh um involved more with my son so um is is i i didn't agree no Okay, let me maybe I can just kind of walk through the the recommendations and then you can give me your take on it. So first recommendation is that 
uh, primary custody be granted to to Ms. Geyer and that you would have visitation. Uh, what's your take on that? Um, I, I don't I don't necessarily um, contest that. I just uh, I guess the I'm more about the uh, the supervised visits. I, I I don't think that it. Um, a lot of the stuff that was talked about was, you know, kind of issues between me and his mom, you know, from the past. Um, you know, I, like I said, I, I just, uh, town's my number one concern. I'm, I'm not saying that I wouldn't do anything because I would do anything for him. And if it requires me to do that, that's what I'm going to do. But um, I just want what's best for him and I just want want everything to uh, just to be as normal as it can be and just get get through this is what, I, what I'm hoping. Okay. All right. So, so your main, your main concern is the, the supervised visitation recommendation. You indicated that if that has to be, then fine, you'll do it because your relationship with talent is really important. But if you uh, had your druthers, you would have it be different and would not be, uh, would not be supervised. Correct. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Okay. And then there was um, recommendations for um, uh, mental health evaluation and SUD evaluation and any uh, follow-up treatment. What, what are your takes on those? Um, I mean, I have no problem. I, I could UA today. Um, and as far as uh, mental health, I mean, it, it couldn't hurt. I don't, I don't, you know, I'd like to have some counseling, you know, with with my son, if possible, or just, I mean, <clears throat> you know, whatever, whatever can help I'm, I'm for, I, I, I'm not, you know, uh, against anything that's going to, you know, benefit me or, or him. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so, okay. So with SUD evaluation, you're okay with doing that. And then the mental health evaluation, your indication is that you you know, your focus is to to build a better relationship with your child. And so it couldn't hurt. And so you'd be open to doing that. Yeah. And, and what exactly is the SED? Yeah. And, uh, substance use disorder evaluation, basically, okay. if there's any concerns related to substances um, and getting away of, of life and the like, then they would do an evaluation. And what the evaluation evaluator determines is appropriate, then that would be the recommendation for treatment and the treatment may be none or the treatment may be take uh, an eight hour class or it could be you know take a uh, intensive outpatient i mean it could or it could, you know if things are really bad it could be inpatient treatment you know so depends on, yeah. on the evaluator and they they take in information from a lot of different parties they talk to you um, get your take on things and then they come up with a recommendation okay yeah okay all right Okay, I appreciate your input, Mr. Yokel. Ms. Geyer, what's your input related to the, the guardian ad litem report and recommendations? Um, yeah, I agree with the guardian ad litem's report. Okay. Uh, I, I know there was um, some say that he was clean off heroin for two years. I wanna bring up that I have been concerned since heroin, it went to fentanyl. I'm very concerned for my son to be around or come across that after hearing how deadly it can be. Mm -hmm. um, so that is my high, high, high concern. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Carr. Oh. Ms. Turnbull, do, do, do you have any, any comments? Yeah, I wasn't aware of that concern until just recently um, after I concluded my report. Um, but if that is a concern, I would agree that that's, um, you know, of course, that could be very deadly very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I certainly wouldn't want talent around that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Yo Yokel indicated that he's willing to do that SUD uh, treatment and evaluation. And, you know, if there's concerns related to fentanyl, obviously, fentanyl is an absolutely terrifying drug um, because of its impacts. Uh, to the living and it causes a lot of overdose death. We just lost a client in in, in drug court just last weekend and it's it, it's it's rampant. It, it's it's a it's an absolute scourge. And so if there's any concerns related to that, uh hopefully that they're they're not and uh and if there are then that could be addressed by the SUD 
evaluation and, and the like. So yeah, I think I think everybody kind of shares in that concern, including Mr. Yokel, because uh, everybody wants uh, talent to be fine and safe and well. Okay. All right. I also have one more question. Yeah, go ahead. I have this restraining order in place, and um, just like two days ago, he texted me asking, "Hey, Dad, it's or Hey, Talon, it's Dad, just trying to get a hold of you." Um, he's not writing my name, but he's writing my phone. Um, what, what are the, I guess I need, um, guidelines or I don't unclear. Like I thought he was not supposed to be writing me. So reaching out for talent, even on my phone, that's still not, that's still not okay. Right. So the order, when was the order entered? Do you know, do you remember? Um, for the restraining order, I don't. I'm at work. I don't have it with me. Mr. Yoko, do you remember the approximate time frame? Um, it was, uh, I'd say, about a month ago, maybe. About a month. Okay. Let's see. I, I have no, um, no, I, I, I wasn't trying to contact her at all. I, I don't have any, um, I'm not, I was just, I didn't know how to reach my son. That I, I haven't talked to him for a while. I've. He's used to seeing me, you know, and it's been been kind of hard not seeing him. So, sure. Let me let me ask um, Ms. Turnbull. Um, did I don't recall specifically if you had any recommendations related to that aspect of as far as communication concerning the child? Did you make any recommendations? I, that? I would recommend it be supervised for some period of time because there has been a history of in inappropriate involvement of adult issues uh you know that talent's been involved in and i am concerned about that okay so so, so if, as far as if there was um a need as far as communication regarding the child you know setting up times for for, for visitations and the right and the like are, are you are you yeah. suggesting mr Turnbull, that there'd be an exception or that there would be a third party that would be the communicator uh, for supervised visitation, I think, well, I would recommend professionally supervised visitation, at least for some period of time, so that we can have some feedback from the professionally super, the professional supervisor as to the nature of the communication between the parent and the child. And yeah, it, it, more to the point as far as like, you know, setting up like, okay, it's going to be Tuesday at, at 4 p.m. How is that? How does the communication between the parties happen? Is it through a third party or with that restraining order in place? How does that work? Oh, yes, a third party. Okay. Yeah, I prefer a third party as well. Okay. All right. M Ms. Geyer, does that does that address your concern? Basically, it'd be, um, you know, if there's a restraining order in place, that needs to be obeyed. And if there's communication involving the child, then the part, if Mr. Yokel needed to communicate with you regarding the child, then he could ask a third party to communicate with you solely on the issue of, of the well-being of the child. Yes, the third party is fine with me. I think I put in there something about the app I heard about you guys having that, but obviously there's that restraining order, but regarding Talon once, um, if there was an app or something you guys had that, like, with the wizard, is that what it's called? Yeah, there's a, there's a variety of them. There's one called Talking Parents. There's another called Our Family Wizard. And it's basically a, a, an app-based uh, subscription service where the parties can communicate. Everything's recorded. And so you communicate with the children about the child. You can send information, you know, take a snapshot of a, a doctor's report or a school report and share that information and everything's recorded. And so it's it's a really good tool because it keeps everybody just on, honest and, and straightforward. Uh, there is a cost. I'm not exactly sure. There's an initial kind of setup fee. I think it's like $30, $25. And then there's a monthly fee of maybe six or seven dollars. Ms. Turnbull may know better than I, but that, that's kind of what I remember. So that's um, there wasn't a specific recommendation of that. Uh, let me just ask Mr. Yoko what your what your thought are thoughts are about that type of uh, communication tool. Um, yeah, as long as I don't have to um, talk with her, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm all for it. I just my main concern is Talon and. Uh, yeah, that's just, uh, that's, that's why I'm here. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Maybe that's okay. something we could add in, you know, once we get a few supervised visits under our belt. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's 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 probably a, a suggestion well taken. Okay, so it, it sounds like you know from hearing from Mr. Yokel and Ms. Geyer and and Ms. Turnbull, uh, there's no strong opposition to the recommendation that Ms. Ms. Geyer serve as the the primary custodial parent. So I'll I'll name her as as such as the primary custodial parent of of Talon. There's disagreement here between the parties from Mr. Yokel and Ms. Geyer and Ms. Turnbull related to uh, what visitation should look like and whether it should be supervised. Um, I think, you know, based on the information contained in the report and from collateral sources, you know, there's 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 positive and negative, you know, on both sides. Um, I do think that the recommendation for supervised visitation, at least for a period of time, is well taken. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's going to last forever. I, on the contrary, what the hope is, is that that those supervised visitations will occur. They'll go super great. And that uh, once those have, have occurred for a, a few weeks or a month or two months, what have you, then uh, Mr. Yoko could come back to court and say, hey, uh, things are going awesome. Look at these notes from the supervisor. Um, I would like to, to move to unsupervised visitation. Um, and so I think there's enough concerns initially uh, that we need to have kind of that that proving period or proving ground for a, a, for a bit, and then then we could move to look at doing something different. So I'm, I'm going to adopt that. I'm going to adopt the supervised uh, professionally supervised visitation for up to four hours weekly, um, and then the sub, the visitation supervisor will take notes, and those notes uh, will need to be submitted and sent, uh, Mr. Yoko. That you'll be in charge of that if you could please. Uh, get those notes, and then you'd file it with the court, and then send a copy to 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 Ms. Ms. Geyer. The um, so that that will occur, and then it doesn't sound like there's any disagreement with the recommendation for the mental health evaluation and the SUD evaluation, and any recommended treatment for both. Um, I, I think that would be a, a help and a support uh, for the relationship and for for Talon. So I'll I'll adopt those. And then regarding the communication uh, with each other, with the with the existence of a restraining order, I think it's important that there be opportunities for the parties to communicate related to uh, Talon, but not directly. So I, it sounds like they're, everyone's okay with the third party uh, being the kind of the go-between um, Mr. Yokel and Ms. Geyer. So I'll carve out that exception in, in the parenting plan. Um, in the future, when we uh, when we come back, we could certainly address one of those apps, one of those parenting apps that um, that allows the parties to communicate. So, if you want to look at that in the meantime, you can pull that up and just do a quick web search, and you can find a, a variety of different ones. But the ones I'm familiar with are our Our Family Wizard and Talking Parents. You can take a look at that. So that's that's the that's what I'll adopt at this point. Uh, primary custody. Uh, with Ms. Geyer, a visitation for Mr. Yokel on a weekly basis, up to four hours weekly, professionally supervised. And then Mr. Yokel, feel please make sure that you get those uh, visitation notes and to the court and to, to Ms. Geyer uh, in support of uh, your motion. For, I, I assume your forthcoming motion for unsupervised visitation, the mental health evaluation, uh, if you need some assistance of where to do that or where to find resources, um, Ms. Turnbull, do you have some suggestions of where he could turn to to find that information? Yes, I can reach out to him off topic. Okay, and, great. And, and do that. Yeah. All right, great. And then the same thing with the SUD evaluation and any yeah. recommended treatment. Thank you for doing that. Um, and then once uh, there's been a, a good period of, of good visits under the belt, then Mr. Yoko, you're, you're free to bring a motion to to modify that 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 plan of visitation and to make a motion to whatever you think would be appropriate as far as to as far as the safety and best interest of Talon and your your relationship with him. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I just have one question. Uh, when does the uh, supervised visit start, and where do I go? go yeah. For that? Yeah, that's that's important. Thank you. The uh, the supervised visitations they can start this coming Monday. Um, so that's Monday. Let's see. That's today's the third. Today's Thursday, thirty first. So the sixth, I think. Is that right? Sixth. I think it's the seventh. So we'll go with that. August seventh. Uh, so they can start the uh, Monday, August seventh, and then as far as finding a professional supervisor, uh, you can check. Uh, do a, a Google search 
Uh, Ms. Turnbull may know of some, some resources here locally. And then uh, would you be willing to provide those to Mr. Yokel? Absolutely, yes. Oh, so we got to hire somebody then, you mean? It has to be professionally supervised for the first little bit, correct. And, okay. and that's why I said up to four hours, because I think professional super, you know, it's going to cost a, a whole grundle of money to do four hours in a week. It may not be that amount. Uh, but what, what is important, I think, is that the quality of the visits, uh, not necessarily the quantity, but, it, you know, that but I'll allow it up to that that amount. And so we're looking for a good showing of those of good visits during that time period. And then we can take a look at removing that requirement. Thank you. All right. Well, I'll, 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 yes, Ms. Geyer, go ahead. I just had a question. I know I turned in a financial docket months ago with, and when it was, I believe, requested in email. And I don't know anything about child support or any of that. Um, I haven't heard of anything. Or Is there a step I need to do? Yeah, if or you're, how do if I you're, go about it? Yeah, if, if any party is interested in, in child support, uh, in, any party can bring a motion uh, for related to child support. So if one party is, is seeking child support or wants to pay child support, any party can bring a motion, file out a motion, file a file and, and with the court a motion, serve the other party, uh, get a docket, get it on the docket, and, the, and that matter could be heard. Okay, so the paper, the financial docket wasn't the what you guys are looking for. That was just something you guys needed instead. Financial dockets are important in understanding what the financial condition of each party is. So we we need financial declarations. Uh, any party that's seeking child support can update their own information. And if they have information about the other party's income, they could update that also. Um, so each party will be under, you know, if that motion is brought forward, uh, for child support, then each party would have the duty to supply information to the court related to their finances. Okay, thanks, Your Honor. Okay. All right, let me touch base with the parties. Uh, if there's any further questions or clarifications, Mr. Yoko, do you have any questions or clarifications? No. Okay, Ms. Geyer, any further questions or, quest or clarifications? No. Okay, and Ms. Turnbull, any final questions or clarifications? My question is um, the, the order appointing um, discharges me when I enter my final report. Do you want me, what is your position on whether you want me to stay a part of this case? Um, we will likely have a review here in the future. Having some of the background that you've absorbed, I think would be helpful, especially mm -hmm. at that next hearing when we make a decision related to um, possibly moving from supervised or unsupervised. So, okay. So if that order says that you're discharged upon submission of your final report, which you've done, uh, then you're telling me that you probably need a, a separate order uh, of, of continuation of appointment? Something like that, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll craft something, continuation of appointment uh, regarding supervised visitation. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll do that and I'll get that one out also. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I All right. And then, yeah. And then Mr. Yoko, just be aware that, um, that to move, to get to, to address the issue of the supervised visitation, to make it unsupervised visitation, I'm going to rely upon you to, to file a motion or get the case on, on, on a docket so we can address that. So I, that's going to be your, your, your responsibility. And just want to make sure you're aware of that because sometimes people will say, well, well, the judge said we're going to review it and nothing's happened. So you're, you're, you're going to be the one that takes the ball and drives on that one and to get it, get it moving. So how many, how many visits do I need to do then? Yeah. Good question. It's up to four hours weekly. That could be divided up in any manner of ways. It could be an hour, one hour, four times a week. It could be twice, two hours a week. It could be a, a one. No, I understand that. Oh. Like for how long how, or how long until I can request for um, to be reviewed? My thought would be uh, eight weeks. Eight weeks, two months, two months. <clears throat> okay. All right. All right, any other final questions from any party? All right, hearing none, thank, thank you all. I appreciate that. That'll conclude the, that hearing for today. Thank you, Anna. Thanks.